Okay, welcome to the electronics class for October the 5th. Uh, right before I turned on the recording, uh, Henry uh, reminded me that I need to wear the wig. So Henry, would you mind telling everybody why I need to wear the wig? Um, I'm pretty sure it was, you copied and pasted the assignment to make the new review one, but you forgot to change the answers. Yes, that's right. And Henry is the only person who noticed. So uh, what I really should do, in fact, what I will do, Henry, I'm going to give you bonus points. Let me make a note oh, of this. Yay. Okay. So Henry was the first person to take the quiz last time. And what Henry discovered was that he put in the right answers, but Canvas told, me, told him that his answers were wrong. And he sent me an email about it. And I said, well, that's weird. So I went and looked at it. And I, yes. So I did, I did exactly what Henry said that I did. I took the old quiz and I copied and pasted it into a new quiz. And then I changed the picture so that the value of the resistors were different. And I forgot to change the answers. So Henry is completely right. But you know, nobody else even noticed it. So uh, you know, that has me concerned. So Henry, I'm glad that you saw it. But, but okay, I, I'll wear it. I was wondering why I did so bad. <laughs> okay. Wait, do you mean the uh, the retake? The retake was completely. Well, or it do you was mean the original. Okay, uh, when Henry took it, they were wrong. Okay. 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 But Hen right. Henry sent me the email and I said, "Oh shoot!" And so what I quickly did was I went in and I changed it. So what, I see. But okay. by the time the rest of you guys got in there, it was okay. There was no All right, sounds, sounds good, sounds good. But here's the thing. I didn't open Henry's email until late in the evening. Mm. I was expecting that you guys would have retaken the quiz in the afternoon. Mm. Henry okay. is the only one who did it in the afternoon. The rest of you, why did you wait so long to take the quiz? You were supposed to take it in the afternoon, not the evening. But I, <laughs> yeah. I can't very, I can't very well uh, wag, wag my finger at you guys unless I wag it at myself because I did screw up. But I did, I did correct the error. Mm. Okay, so I'm looking right now uh, at your answers, and what I see is that uh, there's still a few of you who have not taken the quiz. So I can definitely wag my finger at you guys. Everybody needs to take the quiz, okay? And what I see is that most of you got uh, most of you got tens, and so that's good. But I also see that some of you had to retake it multiple times before you got the ten. That has me concerned. You should have got it right the first time, but oh well. Okay, so yeah, I will wear the wig of shame. I I earned it. I will I will take my punishment. All right, so here's what I want to do. Um, I am not going to go over the answers to the quiz because we spent a lot of time last time doing it. And so uh, I don't see why we need to do it again now. Um, instead, what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, uh, start talking about the new material. Uh, and by the way, uh, several of you guys told me that you were going to start into the new material and give it a shot and see if you could do it on your own. But when I look in Canvas here, none of you took the new quiz. So uh, I thought you guys were going to, those of you that said you got last time's material, I thought you said you were going to do it this time. So disappointed here, guys. Oh, well. Okay, so let me share my screen. Okay, you should be seeing my Canvas screen now. So let's go into here. Okay. And let's go down to the bottom, go to assignments, quizzes and things. Okay. And let's close that up. We don't need that. Sorry, it's running kind of slow today here. All right, okay, so we are now in the unit that deals with parallel and series parallel circuits. Okay, so basically we're combining series and parallel together. Um, so we started off with very simple parallel circuits 
Uh, and then for the last two days now, now last two class sessions, we've been talking about series slash parallel circuits. Now we're going to go into uh, a new way of solving circuits where you have a combination of series and parallel all in the same circuit. Um, this is a new way that at first is going to look like it might be a little bit more complicated, but it once you get uh, used to how it works, you're gonna find out that it's actually quite easy. And the important thing is that this new method will work on absolutely any circuit. Whereas the method that we've been using up until now only works on relatively simple circuits. If you get a circuit with a whole lot of complexity in it, the method that we've been using up until now doesn't work. All right, so. When you open up Canvas, you will see this, and you'll see that there are two rules that we're gonna be use, learning today. One is called Kirchhoff's voltage rule. And by the way, the name here, it's spelled Kirchhoff, but it's pronounced Kirchhoff. Okay, so the CH is pronounced like a K and the two Fs are pronounced like a V. Okay, so we're gonna learn Kirchhoff's voltage rule and we're going to learn Kirchhoff's current rule. And these two rules will allow us to solve absolutely any circuit, no matter how incredibly complex it is. All right, so uh, when you go into the quiz, you'll see I've got two links here. The first link will tell you about Kirchhoff's voltage rule. The second link will tell you about Kirchhoff's current rule. So let's click on the first link and let's go into here. All right, so Kirchhoff's voltage rule, okay. Basically what it says is, uh, it says, let's see. Um, okay. Um, well, let's, let's look at this example and let's just explain it. What Kirchhoff is saying is that if you start uh, at some point on the circuit here, so let me uh, let me start here in in brown, okay. So Kirchhoff says that if you pick some point on the circuit, any circuit. So let's say we start right here, and what we're going to do is we're going to go around the circuit in a complete loop, and we're going to come back to where we started from. And as we go around the loop, we are going to keep track of all of the voltage gains and all of the voltage losses that we encounter as we go around the loop. And so if we add up all of them, all of these, then when we get back to zero here, then it must equal zero. So let's, uh, let's see how that works. So let's start off right here. We're going to go through the circuit. Now we're going to we're going to go across a battery. So we started off at the negative side of the battery. We ended up at the plus side of the battery, and so we we gained forty five volts when we went from this side of the battery over to this side of the battery. Okay, now we're going to move along the circuit, and as long as we don't encounter any resistors or any batteries or any other components which we will learn about later. I mean, later we're gonna learn about, we're gonna learn about transistors and thermistors and capacitors and all sorts of really fun things, but not now. Right now, the only, the only components we really need to deal with are resistors and batteries. Okay, so as long as we don't hit any components there, the voltage is the same. We haven't gained or lost uh, any. So when we go from this point right here to this point right here, we did not gain or lose any voltage, but we did gain some voltage when we crossed over the battery. Okay, so now we are going to cross over a resistor. Now remember, voltage is like pressure. Okay, so when we go over here, we go from a high pressure region into a lower pressure region the amount of current doesn't change. The number of electrons flowing into this, into this resistor 
is equal to the number of electrons flowing out. The current does not change, but the pressure that those electrons are feeling, that does change. Okay, so when we crossed over, when we crossed over this battery here, we gained 45 volts. Now we're, we're gonna cross over this resistor here, going from higher to lower. So we're gonna lose some volts. And if we want to know how many volts we're going to lose, all we have to do is use Ohm's law because we know what the resistance is and we can calculate what the current is. So tell you what, let's take a minute and let's calculate what the current is. I hope that you guys can all do this. This uh, is a very, very simple circuit. Notice all of the current goes through R1 and then it all goes through R2 and there it goes through three. Okay, so I want you guys to type into the chat box. I want you to either type in the word series or parallel. I want you to tell me what kind of circuit is this? Is this a series circuit or is it a parallel circuit? Okay, good. Now I noticed that some of you are typing it in privately and some of you are typing it in publicly. Okay, so uh, good. It looks like everybody agrees that it's series. So the next time I ask a question, if I forget to specify private, please make it be private. So when I ask these questions, I don't want everybody to see your answers. I want you to make them private, but you are correct. These are series circuits. So what is our total in this case? So we got five kilo ohms. Now remember, that's not five ohms, that's five kilo ohms, plus 10 kilo ohms, plus 7.5 kilo ohms. So what's five plus 10 plus 7.5, okay? So I could do it in my head, but I'll probably make a mistake. So I'm gonna use my, my calculator. Five plus 10 plus 7.5. Okay, so I'm getting 22.5 kilo ohms. So it's 22,500 ohms. So let's all calculate what is the current. So hopefully you guys remember from Ohm's law, current equals voltage over the total resistance. If, if I'm talking about the total current, which in this case is equal to, uh, to equal to the current everywhere. Okay, so if the voltage is 45, so if I divide that by my last answer, okay, um, so I'm getting, uh, two milli milliamps, okay? So the, the current is 0 0.002 amps, which is two milliamps. Okay, so let's remind, let's make a note here. Current equals 0 0.002 amps. Okay, so now that we know that, now we can calculate what the voltage drop is when we crossed over this uh, this resistor. Let me get rid of a few things here. Okay. So when we crossed over this resistor, okay, the we can use Ohm's law. If if I equals V over R, if we multiply both sides by R, V then equals R times I. So the voltage across this one resistor. It just, just that voltage drop alone is equal to whatever that resistor's value is multiplied by the current that we just got through calculating, which was 0 0.02, okay? So I want you guys to type into the chat box privately, tell me what is the voltage drop across this resistor? Okay, I need to see a few more answers. I'm only seeing two so far. Okay, uh, most of the answers that I'm seeing are 10. One of the answers is 0.1. Um, so yeah, okay, that was okay, so 10. All right, so 10 is in fact the right answer. Okay, so when we cross over this resistor right here, okay, delta V, is 10 volts. So we went from the high pressure side to the lower pressure side. So we lost 10 volts. Now let's do the same thing when we cross over this resistor. And again, we're gonna use R equals V times I, but this time it's a different R. Okay. Now the I is still the same, 
but the R is different this time. So everybody type into the chat box. I'm only seeing one of them here. Okay. I was hoping to see a few more, but uh, okay. So what I'm seeing now is 20, all right? So when we cross over here, we're gonna lose 20 volts, okay? Now our last one here, we're gonna cross over this resistor. So again, we're gonna lose a little bit more pressure. So again, we're gonna use V equals RI. I is still the same as it was before, but this time it's a different R, okay? All right, so I'm seeing people are saying 15, okay? Now, so we gained 45 volts and then we lost 10, lost another 10, 20, lost another 15. So guess what? It adds up to zero. Oh, oh, I see what I was doing wrong. I see. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, so you see how this works here? So Kirchhoff noticed that if you, if you do this, if you start here and you go all the way around the loop and you keep track of the voltage that you gained and you subtract out all the voltage that you lost, it all adds up to zero when you get back to the starting point. And yes, that makes sense. I mean, it would have to, right? How could it not? Okay, that is Kirchhoff's voltage law. And you're going you're gonna to see in a minute how that can be very, very helpful. Right now, you can have a complicated circuit. You could have a circuit with an additional resistor on here. Let's add on another resistor. So this R is now R R four, and let's say that it's uh, two point five kilo ohms. Okay, that changes everything. Our circuit is no longer a series circuit. Our circuit is now what we call a series parallel circuit. Okay. So if we want to calculate the current that's flowing through all the resistors, we could use the same method that we used before, which I like to call the simplification method. Or we could use this new method that we've just learned. And this new method is called Kirchhoff's method. Now this circuit right here, if I try to apply Kirchhoff's method on this circuit right here, the mathematics is very much doable. Most of you in the class here could easily handle the mathematics, but some of you might not be able to handle the, the mathematics. I, I'm, so somebody just asked me a private message. They said, what is the simplification method? I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to do that for you right now. But I don't want to do it on this circuit here because the mathematics, if we use the Kirchhoff's method, is going to be maybe a little bit more than some of you can handle. So let me open up a whiteboard. And I'm going to give you a slightly simpler circuit, uh, but only slightly. But uh, let's, uh, let's see how it works. And now with this other circuit that I'm going to give you, it turns out the mathematics is easy enough that everybody in this class could be able to do it. OK, let's say that I've got a 45 volt battery, just like I did before. And now instead of having a resistor here, like we did before, I'm going to say, no, I'm going to get rid of him. And I'm going to have a resistor here. And I'm also going to get rid of the resistor that was down here. I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, so I got a resistor here. And I'm going to say, whoops, I hate it when I try to draw things. And I'm still in eraser mode. Okay, so now I'm going to come over and I'm going to say we've got another resistor here. So let's pick a couple numbers. Let's say that this resistor here is 10 kilo ohms. And let's say that this resistor right here is 15 kilo ohms. Okay, now I want you to quote unquote solve this circuit. When I ask you to solve a circuit, that means I want you to find out what is the voltage across every resistor and what is the current through every resistor? Okay, so let's start off by solving the circuit the way that we did in last night's homework using the method that I like to call the simplification method. 
I didn't call it this before, but that is what we did before. The whole idea with the simplification method is that you take the actual circuit. So this right here is the actual circuit and you replace it with a simplified circuit that only has one resistor, okay? And if you do it right, the battery over here will feel the same resistance that the battery over here feels, but only if we do it right, okay? Should so, we add, wait, I could just a quick question. Yeah, um, when we're solving for it, should we add the zeros on the 10 kilo ohm? Should we add zeros yes, there? Yes, add the zeros for sure. Okay, so you guys, every single one of you should be able to tell me what is the amount of resistance that I should have right here. So this one resistor is the equivalent of these two right there. So I want everybody to do that right now. I want you to type it into the chat box. Tell me what should the value of this resistor over here be so that it will have the same resistance as these other two. My calculator just died. Well, you're gonna have to get a livelier yeah. calculator. And go get batteries. Okay, well now stick around, stick around. I don't want you to miss what we do here. So right. I'm, seeing, I'm seeing two answers. I need to see more than just two. Every single one of you needs to do this. Okay, I'm starting to see more. Okay, the answer that I'm seeing most often is 6,000. Okay, some of you are saying 0.6, and I think maybe you're getting it mixed up. Remember, 15 kilo ohms is one is 15,000 ohms. 10 kilo ohms is is 10,000 ohms. So the way we do this is we say one divided by 10,000 plus one divided by 15,000 equals one over our total, okay? So when I put this into my calculator, I get an answer of um, 1.666 repeating times 10 to the negative four. But remember, that's not our total, that's one over our total. So what I need to do is I need to take one over that number. And when I do that, I get 6,000. All right. Okay, so let me do some erasing here to make room for things. Okay, so if I replace my actual circuit that you see on the left side with a circuit that has one resistor, but the value of that one resistor is 6,000 ohms, then the battery on the left and the battery on the right will feel the exact same resistance, okay? So what we have done is we have come up with a simplified circuit So simplified circuit that behaves the same way, at least as far as the battery knows. As far as the battery knows, the simplified circuit behaves exactly the same way as the actual circuit behaves. Okay, so now can we calculate what the current is that's flowing through the simplified circuit? Can we calculate what I is? And the answer to that had darn well better be yes. Okay, so I want you guys to do that. I want you to type into the chat box, how much current will flow through my simplified circuit? And don't round off to one sig fig. If it's more, if it's more than one sig, uh, more than one digit, give me more than one digit.
Okay. All right, good. I'm seeing lots of answers and they are the same. Now, some of you rounded it off, okay, you, which you shouldn't have. But uh, okay, so, so the current then that runs through our simplified circuit is going to be 0 0.0075 amps, which is the same thing as 7.5 milliamps. Okay, All right, good. So, we now know how much current the battery is putting out. The battery is going to put out 0 0.00. That, those aren't very good zeros. Let's try that again. 0 0.0075 amps. That's how much current the battery is putting out. And what that means is that's also how much current is flowing into the battery. Okay. But uh, this junction here makes life interesting, okay? If we've got 7.5 milliamps flowing into the junction, that does not mean that the, that the current flowing down this way is 0.75. It doesn't mean that the current flowing this way is 0.75, but it does mean that the two of them together have to add up to 0.75. In fact, this, is Kirchhoff's current rule. Kirchhoff's current rule says that if you have a junction anywhere, the total current coming into the junction has to equal the total current going out of the junction, All right? So tell you what, let's start giving these names. Let's call this guy R1. So that means this, this current we're gonna call I1. Let's call this guy over here R2. That means this current here, we're going to call that I2. All right. So now, if I want to solve this circuit, what that means is I want to figure out how much current is running through each of these resistors. What I need to do is I need to look at what is the voltage across each resistor and what is the value of each resistor. Okay, so let's look at R1. If this is a 45 volt battery, that means that right here, the, the, the voltage is 45. Right here, it, it's 45. Okay, let me, let me, my picture is getting too complicated here. Okay, let me see if I can clear that up. So everywhere along this wire here, the voltage is 45. Until I get to a resistor. Once I get to a resistor, then all bets are off. Over on this side of the battery, the voltage is zero. So it means everywhere along this wire, the voltage is zero until I get to a resistor. Once I get to a resistor, all bets are off. So let's look at R1. I've got 45 volts on this side. I've got zero volts on that side. So that tells me that delta V for resistor R1 is 45. So now that I know the voltage across R1, and I know the value of R1, I can figure out what the current is. So the current through R1 is equal to delta V across resistor one divided by however many ohms resistor one is equal to. So I know that it's 45 divided by R2, which was 10,000. So I now know that the current through our, the current I1 is whatever 45 divided by 10,000 is. Or, yeah, so 45 divided by 10,000 is 4.5 milliamps. Okay. So I need to clear more space here. So I1 is 0 0.004 five amps, which is 4.5 milliamps, okay? All right, so I now know how much current is flowing through R1. Now I need to figure out how much current is flowing through R2. Hopefully you guys realize that there are two ways that I could do this. One way is the same way we did before. We recognize that the voltage drop across this resistor is 45. 
but the value of the resistor is 15. So I could say I equals delta V over R, which is 45 divided by 15, but that's 15 kilo ohms. Okay, so when I do that, 40, 45 divided by 15,000, okay, so I get 0 0.003, which is three milliamps, okay. That's one way I could have done it. Or the other way I could have done it is I could have used Kirchhoff's current law. I could have said, hey, the total current coming in is 7.5. So if the current going this way is 4.5, then whatever is, whatever is 7.5 minus 4.5, that is my answer, okay? All right, so what we just did was we solved a circuit that was a complicated circuit because it had two resistors in it. So this was the actual circuit. And we solved it by replacing it with a simplified circuit that only had one resistor. Simplified, okay. So we took the actual circuit, we replaced with the simplified circuit, and then we figured out what the current was flowing through here, and then we used that to, to, uh, to figure out what these guys are. That's what I call the simplification method, okay? Now, I propose to you we could have done that much easier by using Kirchhoff's method. So let's find out how we could do that same thing using Kirchhoff's method. So let's take the, the original circuit, which was a 45 volt battery, a 10,000 ohm resistor here, and a 15,000 ohm resistor here. And let's see if we can solve this more easily using a different method, which is called Kirchhoff's method. So in Kirchhoff's method, what we do is we say, okay, let's pick some point on the circuit. I like to pick a point right here. We are now going to go around the circuit until we come back to our starting point. And we're going to keep track of all of the current or all of the voltage gains and the voltage losses. So I'm gonna cross over a battery. And I went from the negative side to the positive side. So hopefully you guys recognize that I just gained 45 volts. Now I'm gonna come along here, nothing, 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 nothing. Now I come to a junction. I have to make a decision. Do I wanna go right or do I wanna go straight? Well, let's say I'm gonna go right. So I come along, boom, I just hit a resistor. So if I cross over this resistor, I'm going to lose some voltage and I want to know how much voltage I'm gonna lose. Well, you guys all know that if I equals V over R, then V must equal R times I. So if I wanna know how much voltage I'm gonna lose going across there, it's gonna be whatever that R value is, which hopefully you, 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 can, you can see that R value is 10,000 times whatever the current is, which we don't know, so let's just call it I2. And that is how many volts we're going to lose. Now, when I come back here, I've now reached my, my starting place. So what Kirchhoff's voltage rule says is that if I keep track of the gains and losses, it all has to add up to zero. So what that tells me is that 45 minus 10,000 times I2. Oh, did I call it I2? Oh, let me... That's, that's not good. I called it I1 before. Let me, let me call it I1. Sorry about that. That has to equal zero. So look at that. Is that, a, is that an equation that everybody in this class can solve? I like this way better than the previous method. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this way is much better. Okay. This is definitely a better way to solve it. Okay. So from this point on, it's no longer an electronics problem. Now it's just a math problem and you guys are good at math, right? 
So I want you guys to, actually, I want one of you. Um, how about, let's have Isaiah. Isaiah, can you tell me how you would recommend to solve this problem? Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so we are subtracting 45 minus 10,000. Well, yeah, it's not 10,000, it's 10,000 times I1. Oh, so I1. What we okay. want to do is we want to solve, we want to know what is I1. Oh, we want to solve for I1, okay. We want to solve for I1. So, so what we would do is we would subtract by 45 to get 45 on the other side, because we slowly okay. want to get uh, I1 by itself. And so okay, now so hang on a sec. So when we do that, we're going to get negative... 10,000 times I1 equals negative 45. Okay, what do we do next? Okay, so now that our equation looks like that, we are one step away from getting I1 by itself. Okay. So because negative 10,000 is part of I1, we want to divide by negative 10,000 Okay. because so we can't have that. negative 10,000 I's. Right, and so, so, we're gonna, so what we, we want to do that. Negative 1,000 times I1. And the way we undo multiplication is by division. So we're going to divide both sides by, by negative 10,000. Okay, and there you go. So when you put that in your calculator, what do you get? Hold on, my calculator's taking a second to turn on. I get 0 0.0045. Okay, all right, so this is equal to, let me do this in a little bit better. Okay, so this is equal to 0 0.0045, and so that is I1, okay? So this method gave us I1 a whole lot faster than the simplification method did. Now we're not done, we still need to figure out what is I2. Okay, so I want you guys to do this by yourselves. I'll get you started, but let's see if you can do it by yourselves. So hang on a sec while I do some erasing here. Okay, so this time, let's... Okay. Almost done. Okay, so this time what we're interested in is I2. Okay, so let's start in the same place that we started by four, but started before. We're going to cross over a resistor, or boy, I'm sorry, my brain and my mouth are just not connected today. I think wearing this wig has that effect on me. Okay, so we're going to cross over a battery. So we're going to gain 45 volts. Now, when we come to this junction, if, if we're interested in finding out what I2 is, then we'd better go straight, because that's the only way we're going to get, to get an equation that has an I2 in it. All right, so let's go straight this time. So now we're going to cross over a resistor, so we're going to lose some voltage. And because we know that V equals R times I, the voltage we're going to lose is equal to whatever this resistor's value is, which is 15,000, times whatever this current is, which is I2. And now when we get back to here, we see that it has to equal zero. So now we have an equation with just one variable in it. So we say, OK, from this point on, it's no longer an electronics question. Now it's just a math question. And you're good at math, right? So can everybody please punch that out? And type into the chat box in private, tell me what is the current going to be? All right, I'm seeing several answers now. Okay, good. All right, so I'm seeing everybody seems to agree now that, that the current I2 then works out to be 0 0.003, which is the same thing as three milliamps, okay. So hopefully you guys see that solving circuits using Kirchhoff's method is sometimes 
a whole lot easier than solving it using the simplification method, right? Now, I've got to warn you that there will be times when you try to use Kirchhoff's method on a circuit and you're going to come up with more than one equation with that has more than one variable in it. And now those of you that are really good at math, you know how to solve two equations with two unknowns or even three equations with three unknowns. And so you're going to look at it and you say, no problem, I can do this. Those of you that are still in ninth grade and still kind of learning ninth grade math, there are going to be some cases where you're going to try and solve it using the simplification or using the, the Kirchhoff method. And you're going to get a set of equations that you might not know how to solve. I'm not going to tell you how to do it today, but next time we meet, I'm going to show you a method that you are absolutely going to love. Okay. Um, but let me just show you what I mean when I say that sometimes you're going to get into some cases where it's going to be a little bit tricky. So let's go back to the case where we have a resistor right here, a resistor here, and a resistor here. Let's say this is 12 volts. Let's say this is, uh, this is 4 ohms. And let's say this is 6 ohms. And let's say this is 3 ohms. OK. If you try to use Kirchhoff's method on this circuit, you are going to get some equations that some of you are going to know how to solve, but some of you are not. Let's, let's do it. Let's see how this works. Okay, so let's give these, let's give each one of these resistors a name, first of all. So I'm going to call this resistor R1. I'm going to call this guy R2. I'm going to call this guy R3. And so the current, I'm going to match the name. So the current that flows through this guy, I'm going to call that current I1. And hopefully you recognize that the current that flows through this resistor is going to be the same as the current that flows through the battery and is going to be the same that the current comes out of this junction. So at, if I start at this junction, you can see I've only got one path to take to get me around to here. So that means anywhere on here, the current Oops, that should have been a one, not a two. The current is going to be I1 anywhere in between this junction and that junction. Now, the current that comes out of that junction is going to be different. This current here, I'm going to call this I2. And this current here, I'm going to call this I3. Okay. So, I2 and I3 and I1 are going to be different. So, so if we use Kirchhoff's current law, so Kirchhoff's current law, it says that if we look at any one junction, however much current is coming into that junction has to equal however much current is going out of this junction. So the current coming into that junction is I1. The current going out of the junction is I2 plus I3. All right, so there's an equation, but you'll notice it's got three variables and we don't know what I1 is. We also don't know what I2 is and we also don't know what I3 is. So we've got three unknowns and only one equation. Hopefully you guys have learned in your math class that it doesn't work very well. If you got three unknowns, you need to have three equations, right? So we're need, gonna need to get another equation from somewhere. Well, the way we can get the other equation is by using Kirchhoff's vo voltage law. So we're gonna start right here and we're gonna go around the circuit and come back to where we started with and we're gonna keep track of all the voltage gains and the voltage losses. Okay, so when we cross over this guy, we're gonna gain 12 volts. When we cross over this guy, we're gonna lose the voltage. And remember, V equals R times I. So the voltage we lose crossing over this guy is gonna be whatever R is, which is three, 
times whatever i is, which is i1. Now, when we come to the junction here, if we choose to go south, we're going to lose some more voltage. And again, V equals RI. So whatever the R is, which in this case is 4, times whatever the I is, which in this case is I2, that's how much voltage we're going to lose. Now, when we come back here, we're back at our starting point, so it equals 0. OK, so now we've got two equations but we've got three unknowns. So if you've got three unknowns, you need to have three equations. So where can we get the third equation from? Well, we can get that by going around the loop. But this time, whoops, I hate it when I try to draw and I'm still in eraser mode. I hate when that happens. Okay. So that we're going to start here. This time, we're going to go around the loop this way. All right, so let's keep track of all the voltage gains and losses that we get when we do that. So when we cross over this guy, OK, again, we're going to gain 12 volts. Let me try that again. So we're going to gain 12 volts. When we cross over this guy, we're going to lose some voltage. And if V equals Ri, then the voltage we're going to lose is 3 times I1. Now, when we come to this junction, we want to go straight this time because we want to go through this resistor. So when we go through this resistor, the voltage we lose is going to be R times whatever that current is. So the R this time is 6. So the current this time is I3. And so that equals 0. So now we get to a point where we say, OK, now we have three equations, three unknowns, right? So those of you who are good at math, you look at this and you say, OK, from this point on, it's no longer an electronics problem. Now it's just a math problem. Three equations, three unknowns. We learned how to do that in my math class. So it's a little bit tricky. Uh, in fact, some of you may, those of you that have solved three equations, three unknowns, you probably know that it's actually very messy. It's a long involved process and it's really easy to make mistakes, but it can be done. Okay, so if you, uh, if, if you are confident in your math skills, you can go ahead and you can use this, this method and you can solve for, uh, the, uh, for I1, I2, and I3. But I'm willing to bet that most of you are going to look at this and you're going to say, three equations, three unknowns. Arg. And so most of you are going to say, oh, Kirchhoff's method is going to be too messy to use here because I don't know how to solve three equations, three unknowns. Okay. So most of you, if you have to solve a problem like this, you're actually probably better off using the simplification method. Okay, so remember how you would use the simplification method? The simplification method says take this complicated circuit and replace it with a simplified circuit. So the first thing I would do is I would take these two guys and I would combine them together. So I would get a circuit that looks like this, where this one resistor is these two guys combined together using the parallel rule. But this is only a semi-simple circuit. It still has two resistors in it, and that's not what I want. So what we're going to do then is we're going to take this, and we're going to simplify it down to get one resistor and one battery. Okay, so now this is now the fully simplified circuit right here. Now that I know now that I've got it down to one uh, battery, one resistor, I can now calculate what the current is that's going to flow through this circuit. So I know what this current is. So that tells me what is the current that's going to flow through here. This current is going to be I1. Once I know what the current is, then I can go through and I can calculate what is delta V here, and then I can calculate what is delta V here, and I can calculate what is delta V here, okay? So it's a little bit messy, but if you don't know how to solve three equations, three unknowns, 
the simplification method is going to work for you. Okay. So you see why I say it, that sometimes the simplification method is easier. Other times, Kirchhoff's method is easier. So this is why you need to you need to learn both. In your homework tonight, uh, after you read through the uh, the chapters on the electronic uh, textbook, do the problems that I've asked in the quiz. They will help you to understand Kirchhoff's method better. I have chosen problems that I know are going to be easy to solve using Kirchhoff's method. So do the, do the quiz tonight. That will help you understand Kirchhoff's method. Okay. Um, so uh, next time we meet, I'm going to show you a trick for solving three equations, three unknowns that you are absolutely going to love. Okay. If you've got an equation like plus 15 minus 2i1 minus 3i2 equals 0, and you've got another equation that says plus 15 minus 2i1 minus 5i3 equals 0, and you've got another equation that says i1 plus i2 equals i3, or vice versa. I'm just making this up. And you look at that and you say, three equations, three unknowns, and you say, arg, like a pirate would say it. I'm going to show you a method next time we meet where you can solve those three equations, three unknowns, very, very easy. By the way, do any of you know what that method is? Any of you know a really, really easy way to solve when you've got three equations, three unknowns? Have any of you ever heard of something? Yes, Tristan, you got it exactly right. We are going to learn how to do matrix math. Now, some of you have heard the term matrix math and you might be scared because you say, oh, matrix math, that's really hard, guys. Matrix math is not hard if you let your calculator do the math for you. If you have a TI 83 or 84, or if you have a TI Inspire, the calculator will do all the messy stuff for you. And you will find that it's very, very, very easy to solve three equations, three unknowns, if you know how to do matrix math. But I'm not going to teach you that today. Today, I want you to just have practice using Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law. Okay. So when you do the homework tonight, okay, so um, let's, uh, let's take you into here. Okay, so when you do this right here, which is, with, this is your homework tonight, all of these problems that I've given you, are problems that can easily be solved using Kirchhoff's voltage rule and Kirchhoff's current rule. And you don't need to do three equations, three unknowns in order to do it, okay? Just so just do them. And then next time we meet, we'll learn how to solve it using matrices. And you will love matrices, I promise you. All of the stuff that you've heard about matrices, no, oh, they're so scary. Well, if you had to do it by hand, then yeah, it would be. But I'm gonna teach you how to do it on your calculator and you're going to find this really easy, but not today. That's next time. Okay, before I turn you loose to work on the homework, are there any questions? Oh, uh, yeah, I have, a, I have a question. Okay, go ahead. So could you not use Ohm's law to find the, uh, to find the unknowns? Or you, You're going to have to use Ohm's law. There's no escaping Ohm's law. Oh, yeah, 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 but can, can you not do that to find the unknown variables? Nope, you're going to have to use it. Well, no, well, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, you can use Ohm's law to find the unknown variables. Um, yeah, yeah I must not be know. understanding your question. Oh, okay. Yeah, but so you, you use, that's what you do to understand, or like, that's what you do to get the unknown variables, you use Ohm's law. Yes. Yeah, okay. 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 Yeah, there's no escaping Ohm's law. You're going to use Ohm's law a lot. Okay, any other questions? 
Okay, now I'm going to end the live portion of the class, but remember class is not over. We still have, uh, we still got 40 minutes left in class. Use this time to read the electronic textbook and take the quiz. All right, so I'm going to end the recording right now. So if any of you had any questions you want to ask, but you didn't want to ask them because you were afraid that it was being recorded, then I'm going to stop the recording. So now you can ask without being embarrassed.